all jacked up now, oh, aren't yes. we, folks? Welcome to ETSU football, a championship season. I'm Jesse Carl, joined by Nick Dugan. Uh, Nick, we're all jacked up. We got plenty of juice in the next 30 minutes. Yes. I know you're excited. We got to just calm down over there. I understand it. Right. But in the next 30 minutes, like I just said, it's going to be an incredible journey and historic season for this Buccaneer football team. And we're also going to preview the postseason as well. So we're going to look back and we're also going to look forward. But before we do that, we got to look at how this team got to this point. Nick. Uh, that's right, Jesse. It's been a season of firsts for Randy Sanders and his squad. They're able to chalk up their first win against an SEC opponent, an outright conference title, the first one in 53 years. Also, a couple of records broken along the way. So you could say it's been a pretty exciting season thus far. <laughs> this season will go down as one of the best in ETSU history, but. Before the Buccaneers reached their destination of celebration, the journey was quite a ride. ETSU storming the field in celebration as the Bucs have knocked off Vanderbilt 23-3. The 20-point victory over Vanderbilt marked their first win over an SEC foe with it being just the second triumph over a Power 5 team. Every time you go out there, every time you go on the field, you're making a memory. It's either a good one or a bad one. And then the Buccaneers just rolled the rest of the way in non-conference play, walloping wise and dismantling Delaware State. Their conference opener against Samford really set the tone for the SoCon slate, as the tempo never really seemed to slow down. Holmes. Look at him fight, and wow. Holmes is in for a touchdown. Following the OT thriller, the Bucks brought down Wofford at home for the first time since 1998. Just have to grind like you're 0-5 or you're 0-4. You know, practice like you're 0-4. That way you go into the mindset of the game. After bowling over the Citadel, the Bucks actually hit their lone roadblock of the season. A five-point stumble at the hated rival, Chattanooga. So the Bucks knew their title hopes would be dashed if they had another blemish on their record. So Sanders and his squad did what they do best, buckle down. If we're made of the right stuff, we'll put it behind us and we'll move forward, learn what we can from it. No one was safe in this SoCon. The boys from Johnson City beat Furman on the road for the first time since 97. We're going to catch our breath, but we can't go into this bye week thing and it's a week off. Then they toppled reigning conference champs VMI, walloped Western Carolina, and held off Mercer to win their first SoCon outright title in 53 years. I mean, it's just the energy around here. I'm glad we ever get the fans to win. We got a championship. So here we are again. And, well, the Bucks have another chance at history. They've got an opportunity to capture the school's first home playoff game since 1996. I don't think we've lost sight on of who we are. Uh, yes, we're SoCon champs, but that doesn't change how we win. That gives you chills right there. But as you just saw, this year proved to be one of the best seasons in program history. But there's also been some bucks that can't be overlooked. One of them, well, it's number one, Quay Holmes. The Powder Springs Georgia native led the FCS in rushing during the regular season while also being named the SOCON Player of the Year. He was joined in the backfield by Jacob Sailors, who gives the Buccaneers one of the best two, one-two punches in the nation. Tyler Rydell, well, he's also a great option under center. And you also can't forget the Johnson City Moving Company up front. <laughs> yeah, Jesse, they're just <laughs> as good on exactly. defense, having studs. They got studs at all three levels. They are anchored by linebackers Donovan Manuel and Jared Folks, Elijah Huzzy, Tyree Robinson, and Mike Price saw our secondary what no one wants to mess with. And these guys, they know they're dangerous. Taking it a game at a time is what's gotten us here. So now we can't get here and then start thinking, oh, man, championship time. You know, when during the whole season, it was just this game is the most important. So we got to keep that mentality. That's what's gotten us here. You start thinking too far ahead. You know, trying to dismiss your opponent in a way, but you just got to take it one game at a time. It's all on the line. Uh, you can't. Can't hold anything back. Uh, every rep, every snap. So, uh, but yeah, it's, it's the same thing as uh, preparing against uh, Vanderbilt or UVA wise. And the man leading the charge this season is Coach Randy Sanders. He's been through thick and thin with this program from a two-win season to conference championships and numerous playoff berths. It's been an eventful career in Johnson City thus far. Kenny had a chance to sit down with the head Buck and talk about what this program means to him. Team's got heart. The the team 
compete, they, they battle, they, they, they never give in. That, that's the one thing I have appreciated about them since back in the spring. It's, it's been a fun team to coach, it's been very responsive. We're, we're young. And a lot of times young teams are very, very frustrating. There's no question because it takes a while for, for players to truly embrace your culture, to embrace what you're trying to do. But the thing we've had, we've had a group of older kids, even though it's a small group, that has brought the younger guys along. I know you want to be in the playoffs every season, but are you even a little surprised that you've been in the playoffs now twice since the 2018? I always thought we had the potential to do it. Now, 18 was a little bit of a surprise, uh, but I expected, if we didn't do it in 18, I expected to do it in 19. If it didn't happen in 19, I expected to do it in 20. You know, and from day one, the only thing I've talked to the, the players about is, uh, here's our goals. Here's what we want to accomplish. I expect to be in the playoffs. I expect to be practicing on Thanksgiving. I expect to be, but you know, the first year I was here, we changed footballs because they were playing with a ball that you can't use in the playoffs. So I'm like, so why are we going to change footballs after playing all season and have to change to get ready for the playoffs? No, let's, let's use the ball we're going to use in the playoffs. And I think a lot of people looked at me like uh, I was probably crazy, but if you don't expect to win, if you don't expect to compete for championships, if you don't expect to be in the playoffs in the national picture, you're not going to be. Are you home? Is this your last stop? I don't, um, I didn't come here with the intentions of trying to uh, turn this job into something else. I, I came here to be uh, uh, head coach at ETSU and I've, I've loved the time I've been here. I'm looking forward to what's next. I think um, you know, there's still a lot more to accomplish here. We haven't accomplished what, what I wanted to accomplish when, when I came here. So um, it's, been, it's been a lot of fun. Looking forward to uh, what's coming next. And um, I, I have no intentions of leaving and going anywhere else. I, I, I said when I came, I intended for this to be my last job, and I expect this to be my last job. And we love Randy here. Now, another coach that's crucial to this team is kicking specialist Doug Blevins. The former NFL assistant is no stranger to the Tri-Cities, having attended the Johnson City School. And, well, once again, he's having another impact on this campus. That's a nice one. Well, you could say the same for Doug Blevins. Good job. I've came a long way, and... He deserves all the credit for that. Coach Blevins has helped them out, me out. He's helped really the whole group out. The ETSU kicking specialist has been crucial, not just to these guys, but this entire team. The kicking game has been extremely important in every game. I mean, Tyler's made some very clutch field goals this year, and if he didn't make those, then we'd probably lose the game. The kick is good. As confidence has built for the Buccaneers, there's actually been some doubt about Blevins since day one. I was almost skeptical of, you know, was he really our kicking coach? Is this the guy? Originally, I was kind of confused. I was like, I don't, I, don't, I don't really understand that. Because how could you coach kickers when he's never booted a ball in his life? Blevins' biggest opponent, cerebral palsy. Good job. Good job, whole night. You told me that I would have been able to accomplish what I have and, and coach the organizations I have when I was young. Uh, you know, I would not have believed it. He's gone toe-to-toe -to -toe with some of the game's best teams and biggest kickers. David Akers, Justin Tucker, Adam Benateri, they've all listened to the wisdom of Coach Blevins. This game has been my life for, you know, my, my entire life. But he didn't just build the blocks for his pro protégés. The little pieces he was putting together for me were instantly making me better. It's definitely nice to go out and perform for Coach Blevins and the staff and the team. And um, you know, to be able to say that he's helped coach me, I think kind of answers all those other questions that the naysayers might say. The coach's response to those skeptics? I love to, to see it in their face and so forth. And, but there will always be people that, that scoff at me or, or think it's a publicity stunt or why are you here? I'll always have to be better than better or better than good. 
Um, but I think that's why I've been successful. And there's no plan of that stopping, with the Bucks making a run at a national championship. I have a great deal of confidence. If we need them, uh, they'll win the game for us. Proving that this team can accomplish any kicking feat. It was a good chance that this game could come down to a field goal, so that's going to be crucial, but there. Now, we just scratched the surface of this Buccaneers team, and coming up in just a little bit, we'll talk about one special linebacker along with the Owls are going to think about the Buccaneers tomorrow. This, and we also have plenty of more when we return.